So one of the frustrations with playing fingerstyle blues is that there's a tendency to feel, and you can feel trapped in the open position. And like you can't get to any licks or chords up the neck because you're, you're trying to hold down so many different things at once. But there are ways to get both your blues licks and your chords up the neck while still keeping a steady bass going. And when you do that, you can take advantage of a lot of the things that you might know from playing electric blues. So in this lesson, I just wanna show you a couple of short examples of how to do that, playing in the key of A up at the fifth position. Okay, so there are really four steps to this process. First, we need to decide what notes we're gonna choose from to play the single note licks. Then we need to figure out how we're gonna phrase them, what kind of rhythms we're going to play our single note licks as. Then we wanna look at how that falls over the bass line that we're playing. And finally, we wanna add in some chords in between the licks to create a kind of call and response. So first things first, we're gonna basically use the A blues scale which is just a variation on the A minor pentatonic scale. So if we think about A minor pentatonic, we've got flat three, root, flat seven, five, four, flat three, and root. And all the A blues scale does is add in the flat five on the way down or on the way up. And a lot of times you end up adding in the major third to the minor pentatonic scale, and a lot of times you end up adding in the major sixth. So between all of those things, we can make some pretty hip licks. Now, in terms of the phrasing, some of the most effective blues phrasing uh, involves starting before the downbeat and landing on the one. So thinking of it like one and two and three, and four and one, All right? So you're hearing it starting from the end of three, one and two and three and four and one. So you can think of that as like a short resolution into the downbeat, into the one. You could also have a much longer resolution. You could start more than a bar ahead of your landing spot. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one right so you're still coming to that same resting spot but you're starting from further out you put those two things together it makes a kind of natural call and response which is an important idea as far as feeling like what you're playing isn't just random noodling but has some kind of <laughs> has some kind of shape and architecture to it. So we've got our notes that we're gonna use, the basically this, this sort of enhanced version of the pentatonic scale. We've got some phrasing, the short and long resolutions. Now let's look at the bass. Now in a previous lesson, I talked about how to improve your steady bass by changing it from playing four notes all on the same note, or four beats all on the same note, like one, two, three, four, all on the A, which is the root in the key of A. Changing that to where you're rocking between the root on beats one and two, and then the fifth on beats three and four. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And how you could even put in flat seven sometimes on beat four. So one, two, three, four. One, and this itself can make a kind of call and response because if while you're busy playing the licks, you stick to basically roots and fifths, then if you get to a moment where things are more at rest in the melody, you have time to answer with the flat seven. But so we're gonna take that basic rocking bass and use that as our bass. And now we wanna see how are the licks gonna fall over that bass. So if you're here, one, two, three, and four, and one. Right, so as the bass goes on beat three to the fifth, you're gonna play on the end of three with your pickup phrase. 
So one and two and three and four and one. And then if you want to play one of those longer phrases, it's going to start three and four and one. Finally, let's add some chords into the mix so we can have some contrast between our single note licks and some chord responses. And again, you don't have to play open position chords. We've got the bass down here, so we can play some partial chords, some double and triple stop kinds of things uh, further up the neck if we want to, like these. So we're grabbing part of an A7 chord and part of a D chord. So here we've got a bar at the fifth fret starting from the fourth string and going up to the high string. And we want to just play the fourth, third, and second string with index, middle, and ring. But as we play that first chord, we're going to hammer on to the major third with the middle finger of the fretting hand, like that. And then go to a bar with the ring finger at the seventh fret, same strings. And then play the first chord twice and then go to the D chord again. And that's all really just, I mean, we're gonna put these chords sort of over a basic A sound. We're not really going to D. In fact, the bass still thinks we're rocking from root to fifth on an A chord, but it still sounds good. And so the syncopation is happening over that steady bass. One, First time it's happening on beat two, two, and. And then the next time it's starting on the downbeat. One, two, and, three, four. So we have that to put in between our licks. So that fits nicely in between those short resolutions. If we want to play a whole call and response between a short and a long resolution, we can hold off on the chords. You could even grab part of the chord move in between the short and the long resolution. So, What's nice about this is that it gets you out of open position. And if you have any kind of background in playing single note electric blues, all the things you know from that side of your playing, you can now start to access when you're playing finger style. which is a nice thing to be able to do. So <clears throat> the four steps again, you wanna start with picking the notes you're gonna work with, that pentatonic situation at the fifth fret, and then look at the phrasing and how you're going to land your licks. Um, third, how to coordinate those phrases over the bass. And then finally, how to start putting uh, some of those chord licks in between your single note licks to create that kind of call and response. Now, if you're a fingerstyle guitar player 
interested in learning more about blues improvisation, building your vocabulary of licks while growing your repertoire of traditional and contemporary blues tunes, I encourage you to check out my membership, The Fingerstyle Five, which you can learn more about at the link below or the link on screen. In the meantime, if you've got a question or a comment about today's lesson, please leave it down below. I would love to hear from you. And as always, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.